Hello from the small window on your screen. This is Adam Turtletow from the Healthcare Compliance Association. Joining me via Skype in London is Michael Woodford, the former CEO and whistleblower at Olympus. Michael will be speaking April 20th at the Compliance Institute at Lake Buena Vista, Florida. Michael, first of all, thank you for taking the time uh, this afternoon to join us. Um, can you give people, I know it's hard, but a brief overview of your story at Olympus? Yeah, I mean, Olympus is one of the world's largest healthcare device manufacturers. It uh, employs 40,000 people. It's a Nikkei iconic corporation, very conservative, almost 100 years old. Um, I had worked for the corporation for three decades. I'd become the first non-Japanese president uh, living in Tokyo, but only after literally two and a half months uh, after I had arrived, I discovered a fraud approaching $2 billion. Um, now, I was a, a businessman. I used to send emails and, and go to R&D meetings and visit our plants. And suddenly I found myself in the middle of a John Grisham novel where I was the lead protagonist, literally uh, in fear of my life. Um, so uh, my world suddenly spun out of control. Everything went into meltdown, uh, incredibly surreal. And uh, I had to fight to get the story out in, in a backdrop, which was frankly like Alice in Wonderland in Japan. It sounds like just an incredible story. And, you know, having read your book, I think people are going to be blown away by the complexity. You know, one that you can work at an organization for 30 years and then find all these issues uh, when you reach the upper ranks. And two, as much as we hear about uh, issues that are faced by lower level employees when they find wrongdoing, even at the top of an organization, it's a a tremendously difficult position to be in. I think one of the lessons from your story that this really brings up, it's not easy being a whistleblower, no matter how high up in the organization uh, you are. Why do you think in general people such a, have such a negative reaction to whistleblowing? Um, I think, you know, it, it, it's got connotations of telling tales, snitching. Um, if you work for an organization, it's rather like supporting a football team. You, you lose your orientation of what's right and wrong. Your instincts are to protect the organization without examining um, the actual detail of any particular issue. It's a sort of instinctive behavior of people. And for me, what, what I got gloriously wrong, perhaps it was my own arrogance, but it wasn't the bad guys in Japan who ultimately were arrested and indicted and, and, and admitted their guilt with the whole board stepping down. It was my colleagues in the United States, in, in England, in Hamburg, in Europe, my board colleagues around the world who had helped me, supported me, exposed this. Uh, it was so overwhelming that the, the fraud was so overwhelming, yet you know, 15 minutes after I was fired, these very same people who had supported me and helped me, who some of them were very close friends, they moved in a way in which I would never have anticipated. And that's the problem for whistleblowers, is the way you know, we act as individuals. And it taught me that most people don't do criminal things, but most people don't want to get involved when it all goes wrong. And that, and that still haunts me to this day. Yeah, and that's definitely a story that I think would haunt anyone. Well, thank you very much uh, for your time now, and I, I really look forward to seeing you again uh, at Lake Buena Vista, Florida, at the Compliance Institute. And I'd like to thank all of you who took the time to listen today and look forward to seeing you there. I'm Adam Trill from the Healthcare Compliance Association. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.